In this lesson we are going to create a burning match, but uh, do note that we will just build the part where the match actually burns out and deform. I think that uh, the part that would concern the flame is really suitable for thinking particles tutorial, but uh, trust me this will be more than enough to show you the power of uh, MoGraph once again. Now let me just doodle what I'm trying to achieve with this uh, match. So basically I want a few things here. First one, so I want uh, this match to change color so it really becomes uh, dark as it uh, figuratively speaking burns. Also want to have the ability to deform it because the in real world when match burns it kind of deforms and uh, shrinks and uh, looks a little bit odd. Also, I want the ability to control the thickness of this uh, match once it burns and also the length. And uh, that may seem like a really difficult task, but uh, actually it is not. You can also see that I prepared a simple material that represents this uh, match. This is very simple geometry and uh, you can get rid of this little guy. And we also have this material that will be applied to the match. So this is the material how the match will look like once it's burned. So let me undo that. And uh, that's it as far as the project demands go. Let's now dig into it and see how can we solve this issue. Now for this kind of setups I also build a skeleton and uh, once again don't take the word skeleton as something usual, I just find it appropriate in my vocabulary for this kind of things. Now if I want any deformation on this guy, I can do that with either deformers or either effectors, but um, if I would load a certain effector to this guy, I will pretty much limit myself as far as the shrinking and uh, controlling the length of this guy is concerned. I think the best idea here is to find a way to use this spline wrap because it has all those options built into it and has the spline graphs with which we can play with uh, later. So if we are going to use spline wrap I need a spline and uh, I can create one from this object or maybe I will go even to top view. I will press the P key and enable snapping, just uh, 3D snapping and I will snap just to grid so it will be good enough. I will select a linear spline, I can go like this, it really doesn't have to be precise, I can turn off snapping, maybe adjust this a little bit, so I'm trying to really match the length of this uh, match and uh, that's it. I will hide this guy for a moment because I want to subdivide it. And the reason for it is uh, if it won't be subdivided, I will not have any points that I will be able to deform as I need. So let's go maybe, let's go once more. This would be good enough. Now we will subordinate the spline wrap under our cube so we can really name it match or matchstick. I'm not sure which is the appropriate name but uh, that's not really important. What is important is to drop this spline inside and uh, you won't really see any difference but now this object, this match is wrapped onto this spline and uh, if you select one of these points here, we just hide this guy for a moment, let's say this one, you will see that it actually deforms that match so that gives us a lot of flexibility because we can use effectors on this spline but preserve all the wealth of possibilities from this spline wrap. So that's a really good route for us to create a complex and advanced setup. Now when the match burns it really deforms in a somewhat random fashion. So let's select our spline here and load a random effector under it. Of course it won't deform anything unless we turn off 
point mode and uh, you will see the result which is uh, really too much and uh, let's just use a single axis in this case maybe y let's put this to 20 and uh, i think this could work let's leave it like this for a moment and we will see how that works later okay so now our match is deformed but uh, we really want to control this deformation from the beginning because uh, logically it will burn from this area towards here so we have to put this effector in some sort of a fall of mode and uh, the most appropriate mode here is the linear mode that means uh, it will enable the deformation and it will leave it enabled as it passes and we have to change the orientation here and uh, once again i hope that you didn't skip lessons because this can be a little bit uh, confusing then and uh, i'm pretty sure you will have difficulties following this if you have skipped lessons the reason i'm saying this about uh, skipping lessons is because i receive uh, so many emails about things that are answered in lessons and uh, I can't stress out enough how important it is to watch all lessons. 90% of questions I receive on the emails is answered in lessons that uh, one skips. Okay, so let's uh, continue here. Now, I will pull this random effector here to a side so you can just see the effect. So, currently, it's really working uh, in an odd manner let's go to x minus so that means it will enable the effect i hope that makes sense you can see it's really enabling that guy let's find the first point when deformation starts i would say that uh, that is uh, somewhere around here it doesn't really have to be perfect uh, approximations are good enough so that looks pretty good and if you're anything like me then this fall off guy will simply bother you in the viewport and if you uncheck it then you won't be really able to say where the fall off begins so i commonly use a, a substitute object that really acts as a parent for these guys and the similar situation so we'll just uh, hide it and uh, i will select my spline Go into point mode and I will select this last point and we'll go character conversion and I will go selection to joints that will create a joint exactly on the position of that uh, spline point so I'll rename this burn it sounds really funny and I will change uh, the visibility of this guy so I will display a let's go with the circle and uh, I can color that with this color here so let's go maybe with the red one and uh, if i enable this icon color this is new in release 13 this bone will be colored in this color so it's really vivid and uh, obvious so this guy will act as a controller for this random effector and it's uh, going to serve me as a visual guide where is the beginning of the effect so since this guy is here under the spline hierarchy i cannot really put this spline as a child of this burn object because then it will move the spline and uh, the whole setup will break then what i can do i can add a constraint tag i can go with the psr constraint i will maintain original because i don't want this random effector to snap to this burn controller and I will drop my burn controller here and uh, let's go just with the position. Now, I'll check this uh, visibility here so you can see what's going on. Now this burn controller will move that random effector. So once we hide it, we can pretty much uh, forget about it because we have this controller as a visual guide where our effect is uh, starting from i can undo that what is also a really good idea is to freeze the transformations of this guy so this current position becomes 
zero. I hope uh, that ones that watched volume three are at home with these three transformation options. And uh, now, whenever I play with this guy and I hit reset position, it will snap back to its original position. And that's it as far as the first part of the setup is concerned. The other part of the setup we want, and that is for this uh, match to become burned while we move this guy. So this control should also control the burning and uh, we will do that uh, differently than we did uh, this setup. So this will be really a setup for itself, but uh, we will make it work together with some simple espresso. Now let's start by adding a material to the match object and you will see it will completely cover the existing material and uh, let's change the projection here to cubic and turn off this tile and you will see something happening. And now in texture mode you see that uh, the texture is active only inside this box so I can right click here and do a fit to object command and it will ask me do I want the sub objects to be included in this case I can say no and it will really fit nicely around that match. You can even scale this just a little bit in this mode, but only in two axes. So I have to keep the length the same. So, so maybe something like this, just to have a margin, because once this guy becomes deformed, it shouldn't get out of this box. Otherwise, if the geometry comes out of this uh, virtual texture box, then it will show this texture underneath. I hope really that uh, it makes sense and uh, let's proceed. So how do we make this guy travel from one side to another and uh, just select the material because some things will be clear. There are offset values for U and V. And once again, what I was saying at the very beginning, you have to know Cina for d pretty well before tackling MoGraph. Otherwise, you really won't be able to utilize MoGraph's potential in full. So take a look at this offset U setting. If I will play with it, I will simply offset that burn. So it's just a matter of connecting this value with this burn position. So let's put it to 100 here. That will be the starting point, the tip of the match. Now let's connect these two values with simple espresso. So I basically want value from here to drive this value. So I can go here under burn. And uh, this is actually the X minus position which will drive this offset u value so i hope that makes sense i will then right click here do an animation set driver and here under this material under this offset u i will do an animation set driven relative this will create a null with the new espresso tag and it will create a simple expression for us. I will fold these guys and uh, pull this a little bit upwards and explain what happened here. Here, this position X, it's exactly the same value here. For this texture, offset U is exactly the same value here. So this range mapper will really tell what happens to this guy after we do something to this burn position. I really hope that makes sense. So, and uh, also I know it's uh, really simple for ones that watched volume three. And uh, basically what we want to do here is once we move this guy and you can see something happening and uh, try to read out this last value. So it's around 330 or so. So in this range mapper, our input lower should be from zero to minus 330, okay? We just doodled it. 
So this range is from 0 to minus 330, okay? And it should drive this guy, so this is a part where it drives this second guy, that value should be from 100 to 0, okay? So let's give it a shot, so from 100 to zero. Let's now try and see what happens with our burn because this offset U, now if you will try to play with it, uh, you really won't be able because Expresso takes over the control. So let's try to move it and see what happens and uh, how about that. So just to help you visually even more, we grab the doodle tool. This guy is uh, Let's select maybe another color so it really differentiates. So think of this as this violet color here and this guy as the, this blue color I'm about to use. This offset U here is 100% value here and it goes over to 0% because this guy is telling it so with this range mapper. and. As a consequent effect, we have that uh, burning effect displayed. Now, I will get rid of this uh, doodle guy and uh, I hope this was not too complicated. And here under burn object, under the size, you can set the custom and maybe increase this a little bit so it's a little bit more vivid. So. Now would be really the time to add a third component to this setup and that is uh, particles, but this is really beyond the scope of this uh, training. Also, we mentioned at the very beginning, we want to have some additional controls. So let me show you that uh, you can affect the length and uh, you can also affect the size. So maybe you can play with this add uh, points and modify that match as you see fit and uh, that's about it this is one really nice setup let's go now to our next project